Hey guys, today I'm going to be painting the Earth Dragon from Rising Sun. Now, not only am I finally getting to another dragon, but I'm actually sending this to one of my patrons, so stay tuned until the end to see who gets this painted mini. Alright, to start things off, let's start with Uniform Gray, and this is going to be the base coat for all of the rubble and the kind of the parts of the... I'm assuming some sort of temple that are kind of still there. Um, again, just kind of get a, a, a nice brush um, that you can lay a lot of, you know, um, space down quickly so you're not, you know, having to dip your brush too, too much, but that you can still control where it goes, especially when kind of digging in here, just so you can kind of stay clean. Again, it's a base coat, and that's going to be too bad, but the dragon is kind of really brightly colored, and so you don't want to get any dark gray on that. Next up for the uh, little... Kind of statue here i'm doing gold and i'm doing both him and the ball in gold but we're going to separate the ball later right now it's just again kind of a base coat of gold um his tail kind of goes into the rubble here so kind of just you know spend your time here you can kind of see me going a little bit slower making sure i don't mess it up too much okay once we painted the gold we can then go with the known oil on all the gray that we did uh, it should be dry now and you can kind of slap this on. I'm putting it pretty heavy. I want it to really pool in kind of that rubble recess. Um, and then we'll pop this back up later. Alright, so Uniform Gray is back up. And now we are going to be highlighting uh, just kind of the the basics of this. Now this is a pretty heavy highlight because I'm really just bringing back the base color. I'm gonna have an uh, uh, like really high highlight uh, in a bit and that'll really make these pop. This is just making it uh, almost like a transition between kind of the the darker gray now and the lighter gray we're about to use. Now this does take a little bit of time just because there's all this rubble and it's really hard to get in here with the dragon on there. Uh, just kind of do your best. You can kind of see it's a little splotchy, but that actually doesn't look terrible, especially with, with some more wash work we're going to do later and whatnot. And then for these rocks, I just actually kind of, as you can see, I, I don't try and necessarily paint them individually. I'm just running my brush over it. Again, th this one you have to be too careful of because you were just trying to kind of get that base color back. All right, now we're gonna swap to the gold and throw in some Agrax Earthshade because we want it to dry while we move and do something else. So this is just kind of a brown wash that I'm just throwing on the gold. Uh, I think brown works really good here. And uh, it just really brings out all of this, uh, the, the texture on this guy, which is really nice. Uh, so lay it on heavy and just kind of pop it in there um, and then just kind of work it around. Now for the ball, I'm doing Caribou Crimson, which is a red wash, and as you can see, it changes it, which is really kind of nice. Just a little bit, just a subtle kind of, it's almost like a red tinted metal. I think it looks really cool. So uh, do a blue one, do whatever you want. Uh, there's tons of different colored washes out there, a green one, and just putting a different colored wash will tint that gold really nicely. For the extreme highlight now, as I said we do, I got ash gray out, and as you can see, this really, really defines kind of the texture of these rocks. It makes it look really good. Um, it's Rocks, in my mind, are just really easy to highlight anyway. You're, you're just kind of drawing lines and the different shapes that it already has, and it makes it pop so much. So even from a distance, this looks awesome up close, as you can tell. It, I think it looks great. Um, I'm being a little bit more careful now with this very bright gray, as you can see, making sure to only put it where I put uniform gray before, and just kind of on the the actual kind of tops where the light would be hitting these rocks. Um, and then be especially careful in the middle there. In fact, I didn't do a lot of uh, heavy highlighting in that middle where I can't really control the brush, it'd be in the shadow of the dragon anyway. So you can just kind of ignore it. As you can see, I just kind of picked out maybe some of the pieces that were up a little bit higher. But otherwise, it, it's pretty easy. All right, next up is Agrax Earthshade. Now this is why I said it didn't matter too much because I'm gonna take this kind of brown wash and just splotch it on all of this. I don't want it to look pristine and new per se. It's been crumbled, who knows how long it's been sitting here like this. Maybe he just did this. Maybe it's kind of been deteriorating anyway. The rocks in the middle there like that make it almost seem like it, it has been. So I'm just kind of plopping it on there, putting it on the bottom pretty much all the way around. 
and then just splotching anywhere. So if you don't like how a highlight came up, don't even worry about fixing it. Just put this on it, it'll look perfect. So it, again, you can actually be pretty quick here. A little time consuming just because of how big it is, but also quite easy. This was not actually a very difficult miniature to do. Now I have gold back out and heavily watered down to kind of highlight this. And I'm just highlighting the kind of the top rim of the ball here, just to kind of give it a little bit more uh, sheen and, and curvature, like the lights hitting it. Um, again, this is watered down, so you can actually, it doesn't get rid of the red there either, which is kind of nice. And then I'm also doing that here on um, kind of the, the statue here as well, just kind of in, in spots where I think the light would be shining or reflecting on it. Um, the wash will get rid of some of the shimmer of the metallic, the true metallic uh, color that we used. So painting this back on doesn't really change the color so much because of how thin it is, but it gives it back that shine, that sheen, which is kind of nice. Now for the little bit of base that's left, we're doing Goblin Green, and we're going to be doing this on the rim as well, but at the very end, uh, this miniature is too big to really use a miniature holder, so I'm going to be holding the rim, and I don't, I don't want to waste my time painting it when I'm just going to smudge it off. Base is now done, and we're moving on to the dragon himself. On the bottom, I've chosen buff as kind of the base color, and again, it'll change a little bit, and we're going to highlight it and wash it and all that, but for now, uh, buff I think is a very good uh, kind of skin color that I could see that doesn't have like yellow scales. The top of him is like this bright yellow so I think this underside you can kind of see it a little bit in the concept art is kind of this kind of really light light tan color I guess you could say. I don't know where they came up with the name buff uh, but either way this buff color from Vallejo it's really nice. Now instead of really working on the blending you saw me just kind of running my my uh brush like that like I'm doing right now. You'll see me doing that quite often. It's a great way on something round to kind of get a little feathered effect on either side of it. You can kind of see and if I do that with both this demonic yellow which now we're doing and that buff it kind of does a pretty good blend all on its own. Uh, I, I And then with a wash on top of it I don't even have to really blend. So when I do get close to the buff here, what I typically do is I, I, you know, get some paint on my brush and then I'll brush kind of away from where it's touching the buff until I am almost need more paint. I'm about to reload my brush and instead of going to reload right before I would need to do that, I then go right up to the buff. So see, I got rid of a whole bunch and then I went up to the buff. So I have less paint on my, uh, on my brush and it tends to... I think blend a bit better because I don't, I'm base coating it so it's not super watered down like a highlight would be. Um, and just makes blending go easier. If you, again, if you get it close and you know you're going to do a wash on it, the wash will make it look great. So otherwise, this is pretty much just the top half of the, the mini here. It's just kind of your basic base coat. You could get it on the spikes on, on the, his, uh, backside. Those are going to be quite dark. And so you could paint right over those from the yellow. It wouldn't affect anything. Uh, so you don't have to be super careful there. It's easy enough to avoid them though. Alright, so here's a wash and I'm doing Seraphim Sepia. Uh, I, I thought about maybe doing a Reichland uh, Flesh Shade as well, but I think the Seraphim Sepia is a bit more, a bit more orange, whereas the Reichland Flesh Shade is perhaps a bit more red. Um, it may, Anyway, I thought the Seraphim Sepia, you think of like the Sepia filter, right? How it kind of makes everything a little bit kind of this brown orange works great on both the buff and the demonic yellow and really kind of unifies them all together. So uh, the this is actually probably the hardest part of this miniature because he's so big. And if you let the wash dry before you get to it, you're going to leave a tide mark. So what I ended up doing is this before I moved on, I actually kept it really heavy and pulled, reloaded my brush, and then got right back to it. But really, even then, you kind of have to move a little quick. Uh, you could put a retardant in here probably, and then, I don't know, maybe you'd have to do a flow agent as well. You could get technical. I'm average. I just tried to work really fast, and I didn't end up with any tide marks. As you can see, it's actually still kind of wet everywhere. Um, because a tide mark would be really un unfortunate here. You'll see like this line where your brush ended and then you kind of went over some dry wash with the second layer of wash by the time you got back to it and you don't want that. To highlight it up, I'm going straight to dark sand. I wanted to kind of really pop this out and the Seraphim Sepia doesn't change the color too much down here, but as you can tell on his neck, that blend is perfect now already just from the wash and then me kind of being careful with how much paint I globbed on there. So with this kind of uh, dark sand, it's darker than the buff was, 
but it's still quite bright. So it is a big jump, but it'll really make his muscles pop. Uh, so I only highlighted this extreme highlight here on his uh, stomach, just to kind of, again, really make those crevices and that contrast uh, show up really well. All right, so now we're back to Daemonic Yellow, and this is, a, a, again, to kind of bring back this this color that I wanted on his uh, his skin here. He's really bright yellow. There's not going to be a whole lot of um, highlighting, per se, going on. You're going to have the shadows already in there, but I'm not going to highlight another level because he would be too bright then, and I don't... I wouldn't want anything that bright. Even in Rising Sun, I think that's a bit unrealistic. This is plenty bright enough anyway, um, and I think it matches the concept art pretty good as well. There's actually... Uh, quite a bit of brown in there uh, when you actually go and like like look at it. For this tail, what I'm doing is because even even now with how small it is, the the brush that I'm using is just going to lay down a lot of paint. So I kind of put one little glob and then I just feather it out and then I go back to that first stroke and fan that out again. So I'm kind of going over the area twice with it and that tends to to do well. Rakarth Flesh is the next color out, and this is going to get darkened down a lot, but this is for uh, the bottom of his feet, the snakes, and then his kind of bottom jaw is also this kind of like fleshy color. It's not quite as like hard scaled as everything else. So this is going to cover almost the rest of the miniature. The only thing we're kind of missing now are the spikes and the claws. Again, I'm trying to be a little careful when it comes to getting it close to the the demonic yellow there and doing the same kind of idea where I start kind of farther down on the leg and then when I have a little bit less on my paintbrush, I then kind of go up and then fr I, I go down. So I go from the yellow and then aim it down uh, and it kind of brings that paint down and helps blend it a little bit. But again, there's going to be a wash on this as well, so it's going to blend in just fine. Agarax Earthshade is what the the wash that I chose for this, or the shade that I chose, and uh, again, it's going to change the color a lot. That's why I like Rakarth Flesh Shade. You can make this a lot of different um, colors, like I've put Null Oil on this, and it gets a much different color. In fact, I'm going to do that on the snakes. So I'm only doing the feet in this uh, Agarax Earthshade. Uh, looking at the constant art, it looks like the snakes are a bit darker, and so I based them the same, but now I'm going to actually put Nolan Oil on these. And as you can tell, it, it tends to change what you perceive the color as quite a bit, um, even on these snakes where they actually have a lot of the Rakarth flesh still showing, and it's only kind of in those scales. Uh, but they'll blend it well because it's still the same base color and it looks pretty close. So uh, I think this went really well and I was pretty happy with it. Now you could just use one shade or the other, but I think these little kind of touches to nuance really help uh, kind of make it more visually interesting. So now I have Rakarth Flesh back out, uh, watered down, doing a highlight. I'm doing it on both of them regardless of the shade that you use. Um, and this is just to kind of pop it out a little bit. Now for the snakes, I wanted them to seem kind of shiny, but I didn't want to put a gloss coat on them. And so instead of highlighting every little scale, um, that in, in some parts there's less detail than others, I'm doing this kind of stippling with the highlight to kind of make it seem like it's, it's shiny when it's curved like that. Um, the shade did this naturally, but this kind of pops it out and makes it more in the forefront. For kind of his skull, I'm doing this Necromancer Cloak. Uh, it's a very, very dark gray. We're going to put some extreme highlights on it to uh, kind of ramp it back up, especially on the top of the head. And I think it makes it look really cool and fits it in with the rest of the miniature. This is a very dark color on a very bright uh, dragon. I was kind of concerned that it might look silly, like it didn't really belong to the same uh, the same monster. But I think it went really well. Be careful of this uh, kind of tentacle wrap on his head, by the way. You just want to, again, take your time. Use a good tipped brush and then just be extra careful because this will ruin the yellow and I would not want to paint yellow over this. Reusing the uniform gray, I still had it on my wet palette so this worked perfect. I'm doing the highlights around the entire head here. Uh, the top of the head is going to have a separate layer of highlights. For now I'm just painting everything. So kind of the ridges on the top, um, kind of the, the meeting point where it slightly bends up where his kind of uh, head gems are 
And uh, that's pretty much it. I even put some down below just to kind of uh, break it up a little bit. Okay, so real quick with Ash Gray, we're just going to do the top of the head with this. Um, it looked like this in the concept art too, where it was a little bit lighter gray on the top. And this is kind of me doing that without doing any wet blending or anything like that. You could have used two different grays and perhaps blended it. Um, I think just using it all as one and then just showing a highlight is probably more representative of what the art was trying to show anyway. Now we're on to the gems, and this is where where I think the dragon really starts to pop. So I have these moldy, this moldy clothes color. It's kind of base green. We're going to do one level of highlight and you're just going to get every single bump you see on this miniature besides the sides of the head. There's some on the back snakes. There's some all over his body, on his legs or everywhere. Just be careful, but otherwise this really breaks up the miniature. Um, adds another color and the green's really complementary to everything else we've been doing. It just looks really nice, but take your time. And some, like this one, are like really popped out where others are just kind of barely noticeable and you just kind of have to do a little dab. All right, now we have a jungle green, which is a very, very bright green. It's the brightest green I have, even brighter than Moot Green from Citadel. And I'm just doing just a little kind of dab on here. Now, you'll notice I'm using a brush that's seen better days. This is my Psycho brush from Army Painter. I've had it for forever, and it's just torn up because I'm not kind of cleaning my brush afterwards because I'm lazy. Um, I would have rather, I think, have gone with one of my Windsor Newtons with a good tip and then just been careful with how much I'm loading on it than this. but. It is what it is, uh, and I can't go back and redo it, and I, I managed anyway, but you don't want to have to fight the brush when you're painting. Ideally, the brush actually helps you paint. Um, but yeah, because some of these are just a little tiny, tiny little dot, kind of where the light enters. A very small splash of red, Evil Sun Scarlet for all the eyes. So it's going to be his eyes, which are defined quite well. It's really very easy to do because they kind of bulge out. And then the snake eyes, which again, pretty easy. You're just going to come go to the side. There's one on the side of him you can't even see, so I didn't even bother painting it. Now the head gems get my favorite yellow that I have, Avalon Sunset. I don't know why I like it, I just do. Perhaps you guys, let me know if you find a color that you just enjoy. Like for some reason you just like it. You like using it, you like how it looks. I love Avalon Sunset and I have no idea why, because I don't really care for yellows. But this one's fun. Again, be extra careful, this is a bright color on this dark and you just, again, want to, some of these are very, very small. Uh, so just make sure you're taking your time here. Next up we have Daemonic Yellow, and this is for the teeth. Um, I guess I could have painted this with the skin, but I kind of put it farther down on my paint list, which you can see in the description below. So if you're following along and just want to refer to what paint I did where, my exact notes are down below in the description. So uh, let me know if you guys appreciate that. I, I try to kind of break it up there, and I tend to do it anyway, so whatever. I'm also going to use it as a highlight for the gyms. As you can see, I tried to do the whole entrance plus exit light. It wasn't working out, especially with this brush, so I just decided to instead make it more, um, oh, how should I word this, more gem-like, where it's in the center, it's light, and then on the outside, like, the light can't escape as much, almost like it's internally. Uh, I don't know. I thought it looked cool. Seraphim Sepia, again, it would have been nice to do this with the skin, but I forgot, so learn from my mistakes, just paint his teeth with his skin. And now the highlight, again, just like the skin, you're just going to have to kind of take it here and, you know, just highlight him back up. Um, he needs to brush his teeth or floss or something. Now this is fun. This is Warlock Purple, and it's very watered down. Um, I, it's watered down so it kind of blends in well, it's not too bright, but the, these little tentacles here I'm painting in a little bit of a lighter color. They they seem to be that way uh, on the concept art. And then he has a gum line on the top of his mouth, so I'm getting that as well. Alright, this is the, pretty much the last bit of gray on the miniature. Rhinox Hide, a very great solid dark brown that you can highlight easily. 
on all these spikes, but we're not going to highlight it with brown. Instead, we're going to use some red, which is kind of cool, I think, and it works really well with the brown. But this is just going to be on all of his spikes. Again, be very careful here. You have a very dark color and you're painting right over your yellow. Um, so just, just take your time. Uh, again, it's these little things. It's just the details that I think add so much time to these miniatures. Painting this guy up, for me, at my quality and my painting style and speed, took me about five hours. So, nothing terrible. Alright, so we have Warlock Purple out again. I didn't originally plan this, but I wanted to add a little bit more color to it, and so I decided I'll go ahead and paint his tongue uh, the same kind of Warlock Purple. Uh, so again, this is watered down, um, and just kind of simply put it on there. Now, this is Dragon Red, and it's heavily watered down, and as you can see, I'm doing these little kind of shifts up, so there's some slight texture in these spikes, and with it watered down like this, a little bit more than a glaze, um, however not by a whole lot. It'll pool in there and then kind of be more red there but still be everywhere else so it'll kind of blend in. And it gives you that hint of that red that you see in the concept art. Alright, now we are pretty much done but not quite. So we have this green back out for the rim of the base. Uh, if you've noticed, I have forgotten his claws. Paint his claws the same as the spikes with the Ronox hide and then the dragon red watered down. I did that later on, and I'm just telling you now, I didn't I didn't film it or anything. Next, we're gonna varnish it in a matte varnish. He should not be shiny. He is kind of a, a scaly dragon after all, and it allows you to do this. So on this brush, this brush that I do not care about and that is gonna get messed up from this, I have a gloss varnish. I have the testers kind of gloss varnish uh, brush on, and they come in these kind of glass jars. And I'm painting the gloss varnish on all the gems. What this will do, especially over the matte varnish, it won't be as shiny as a regular gloss varnish would be, but just enough to give it a little bit of a shine in the light. And it really helps sell that these are these kind of gems encrusted in his skin. Um, you can do this with stuff that needs to be wet, needs to be shiny, whatever. Either way, I think it's it's a really easy way to do that. Now. Just to wrap things up a little bit more, we have the PVA glue. This is, I use regular school glue, Elmer's glue. Just the white glue, wood glue would even work. Water it down, um, almost a one to one. You want it pretty watered down. Uh, and then you're gonna paint that on the little parts there. And then I got some burnt grass from, uh, from Woodland Scenics. And I just kind of sprinkle it on there. I'm gonna tap the bottom. And then finally, that's it. That is the miniature painted. Uh, so we need to decide who gets this miniature because I'm actually sending this to one of my patrons as I said in the beginning. So first of all, I just want to say thank you so much to every single one of my patrons. You guys are awesome. The fact that you guys believe in what I'm doing here so much and believe that it's either entertaining or helpful or thought provoking or weird or silly or whatever it is you get out of it to where you can support me and help me bring more to this channel. I'm forever in your debt. It's really, really awesome what you guys do. So I like to try and celebrate. So I hit a milestone on Patreon, and every time I hit a milestone, I send out a miniature. That's how I can at least give a little bit back to you guys, so you guys can actually maybe even have a piece from the channel that you saw painted and everything. So this is going out to Phil Ogden. So Phil, congratulations. You will be getting this in the mail very soon. Well, I don't know how very soon is. Snail mail is snail mail, and I'm not sure when I'll get to the post office per se, but you will be receiving this. You will now have this wonderfully painted, well, in my mind, wonderfully painted Rising Sun Earth Dragon miniature. Phil, thank you so much for your support. Uh, you rock, and so do all the rest of my patrons. Thanks so much, and now let's get to the final shot you've been waiting for. We actually get to see the whole thing in the round table with some good lighting on it. Let's get to it. All right, as you can see, this is him finished. I think the blending worked out well. I love the colors. I think he's kind of a, a very unique dragon, and the snakes coming out of his skin are cool, and he's got this awesome base. I mean, the fact he's standing so high just based off of his basing that I, I really like that even Cool Mini are not starting to actually do stuff with the bases, make it really exciting. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. As always, I appreciate it. If you found this useful or if you liked it, be sure to like, share, subscribe, do all that stuff. It helps the channel immensely. And I couldn't be doing what I'm doing without 
everybody's wealth of support. This community is awesome. You guys rock. I'll talk to you next time.